The lockdowns caused terrible anxiety. All I want is for everything to go back to normal. We've been seeing a wave of psychiatric cases. Welcome to a new edition. I'm Nadia Shabi, and this week we're putting the focus on mental health. Fear, anxiety, insomnia, anger, isolation. It's no surprise that cases of depression have more than doubled during the COVID crisis. And with the government warning about a so-called third mental health wave of the pandemic, it's the country's psychiatric services that are left to pick up the pieces. But as you're about to see, historic underfunding and ongoing social stigma around mental illness have only made matters worse. How are we doing, sir? I'm going to undo these now. I'm sorry, but earlier you would have hurt yourself if we hadn't restrained you. This 66-year-old man was checked into the psychiatric emergency ward in the middle of the night. He'd been behaving bizarrely for weeks when his neighbors called for help. His problems seem to have begun during the first lockdown. The lack of freedom was very hard on him. He didn't understand the rules, staying home, the paperwork. He probably had an anxiety depressive disorder, even if he hadn't previously manifested major psychiatric problems. As always, finding beds for patients is difficult. Elsewhere in the hospital, this unit has a capacity of 25 adults. Hello again. I'm going to take your blood pressure. Among them, this man admitted after a methadone overdose. It's difficult, the curfew, closed restaurants and bars, all that. All I want is for everything to go back to normal and to be able to go home as soon as possible. Once released from the emergency ward, some patients are sent to facilities like this one. The Théophile Roussel Hospital near Paris treats both adults and adolescents during stays that can last up to several months. Today, these youths are taking part in a theater workshop. Where are you taking me? What's this? Looks like a pig run over in the street. A pig run over in the street? That's pretty strange. Looks like Peppa Pig. Maybe we should call the police? No. No way. For them, lockdown was especially difficult. In January, I made some friends and we got close. The problem was we got locked down just after, so that was very hard. I was very afraid that my family, my parents, my brothers and my grandparents catch coronavirus. My little brother has a lung disease and if he catches it, that could be very bad for him. So I was scared I would give him the virus. Teenagers have often been suspected as common transmitters of the virus, a source of great pain for some. For roughly two months, we've been seeing a wave of psychiatric cases among adolescents we haven't seen before, who hadn't previously needed treatment but who have either attempted suicide or self-harm. Don't be afraid to take the big branches. In the adult care sector, this therapeutic gardening workshop is back in session after being shut down at the start of the first lockdown. It takes our minds off our illness and gets our feet back on the ground. We did some good work. Super, that smells good. The lockdowns caused terrible anxiety. That's the reality. Yes, for everyone. People who had a vulnerability that was covered up by a normal life. Today, they're still vulnerable, and they might now find themselves manifesting symptoms and even developing disorders. I would be more worried about the general population than for patients. 
These caregivers are hoping for increased funding for their services as they fear the mental health crisis is likely to outlast the pandemic. To tell us more about the mental health effects of this pandemic and France's response, I've come to this mental health foundation east of Paris to meet its director, psychiatrist Marion Le Boyer. Hello, thank you for having us. Thank you. Uh, now, it's safe to say that no one will come out of this crisis unscathed, and we've just seen psychiatric patients uh, are particularly at risk. But there's another category of the French population that needs urgent uh, psychological support and psychiatric support, and that's COVID patients. Why? That's a very good point and very important for the population of patients who have been infected by COVID because they're not aware that they are at increased risk of developing in the month after the infection uh, depression and anxiety disorders. And this is because there is a direct action of the coronavirus in the brain and also indirectly through the cytokine storm. And it's really something which needs to be uh, described and uh, everywhere so that patients, but also their close ones or the general population can detect uh, symptoms and uh, because this can be diagnosed and treated. And this is very important to know. And are these vulnerable patients sufficiently informed about these side effects? Clearly not, because we don't speak enough about these, the, the consequences. We speak about heart consequences or pain consequences, but not enough about psychiatric consequences. Clearly we should inform patients after the infection that if they have endured fatigue, sadness, uh, anxious, or if they have sleep problems, they should really speak about it to the, and tell their doctors, go and see a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Now, funding for the psychiatric sector was already insufficient ahead of this pandemic. How have you been able to adapt to this crisis? Strangely enough, we have adapted very quickly and, and as well as we could. And this is really through development of new technological tools, in particular teleconsultation. And also what we have all been developing are platforms which give access to self-diagnosis tools, but also to advice or uh, techniques to teach uh, psychosocial therapies and teleconsultations. Uh, which has been developed in particular in a platform that uh, we at the Fondation Fondamentale have been able to develop. And this has been offered to students in particular who at are also at increased risk of developing mental disorders and particularly depression and anxiety. You just mentioned students. Let's hear now from one 25-year-old student, Jules, uh, who's had to deal with the pandemic's impact on his pre-existing psychiatric issues. Not everyone. Experiences lockdown in the same way. Jules suffers from a mental health condition known as schizoaffective disorder. It's a combination of certain symptoms of schizophrenia and what can be severe mood swings. When there's an insecure period going on, that can trigger some of my symptoms. That could mean severe hallucinations intense sensory experiences. The 25-year-old has been admitted to a psychiatric hospital more than once and was given a heavy medication regime. Today, he's doing better. But the COVID-19 crisis has given his old demons a chance to re-emerge. It worries me when he spends his days watching films and TV series. When he closes himself off in his bedroom or takes off, doesn't pick up his phone and doesn't give me any news. Shutting himself off or disappearing for a while is how Jules escapes from the anxiety and stress triggered by COVID-19. Unifam is a charity which supports those who suffer from mental health conditions, as well as their families and friends. Jules's mother is a volunteer and Marie-Jeanne is the charity's president. I have received several accounts of families who have had a loved one commit suicide. I can't see how psychiatric services with their limited resources will manage. The World Health Organization says the COVID-19 crisis is disrupting mental health services in almost all countries worldwide, just as demand is going up. 
Marion Le Boyer, a recent parliamentary report has shown that young people are among the most at risk of the pandemic's mental health effects. And it's also shown that the response from school and university services has been inadequate. How might this crisis translate in the medium and the long term for the so-called COVID generation? This is a really important question because uh, once we have vaccinated the whole population, if there, there, is, there are enduring consequences, uh, it's going to be really dramatic for a whole generation, not only the young people, but the whole generation, because we very well know that there are psychological consequences, but also consequences of the uh, economic problems that are in front of us. So it's very important to adapt to this situation. And this is why we have uh, repeatedly asked to improve communication about these effects, uh, to talk about depression and say that it's normal to be depressed in this pandemic uh, period, but also to develop specific consultations for patients. This has been done in some countries, but not everywhere. Uh, and we really need to have uh, uh, to offer to the general population uh, who is not always aware of where to go and how to see a, a doctor that in each hospital devoted in specific consultation for COVID side patients could be developed and also that psychological consultations which are not free everywhere and particularly not in France. And meanwhile, mental health patients are the most at risk of contracting COVID um, and developing severe forms of the illness, yet they've been left out of the government's vaccination strategy. Why? Absolutely, they've been forgotten as usual. This is always the case. We still don't have, or policymakers don't have in mind uh, mental health, and this has been seen at every stages of the pandemic. Uh, in France, hosp psychiatric hospitals have been forgotten at the very beginning and they didn't receive masks. Then the patients have not been prioritized among those that could have access to care, despite the fact that they have comorbid som somatic comorbid disorders that put them at risk of having severe COVID. So it's really important to ask the governments, and in particular in Europe, to put the uh, prioritization uh, for vaccination at a higher level than what is the case today, where except for four countries, they are not taken into account in the priority for vaccination. And this is very serious because they are really at risk. Marion Le Boyer, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, with that, we leave this edition. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned and stay safe. The world is ever-changing. The news doesn't wait. That's why at France 24, we'll always be there to help make sense of world events. For the best international coverage, 24 hours a day, no matter what. France 24, with you everywhere, all the time. Liberté, égalité, actualité.